this is also the first model in the country where a church is working with the with HUD and with the community to come up with a project like well, this. Well, it seems to me um, that when you look at the models of the government versus the church versus the business, you have really three different kinds of models um, in terms of how they function. Business is supposed to make money. And the way you do that is developing a market and possibly a niche for yourself and then competing with others to keep them out of your market. Right. And getting customers away from other competitors. You wouldn't intuitively think that cooperation would be a part of that. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> because if you cooperate, you know, then you have to share revenue and then the revenue isn't going, you know, half, it, half it is going to someone else. So why don't you follow up it ideally? Um, whereas with the government, uh, there's only one government after all. <laughs> you, they kind of have a monopoly. Yeah, exactly. Um, you cannot have any competition really. I mean, you can have different layers, you know, local, state, federal, but there is no way to really um, have an intelligent interdependent framework. Mm. Whereas the church, that's its whole business. You have the, the church bringing people of all different age groups and social groups and educational groups together within the church, and then between churches, interdenominational, you have the church fulfilling the role of spreading different different religious practices. So it seems like the church has a very key role here in helping to spread certain cooperative values through society. And that's part of what we're trying to do. We're looking at using the, the children's after-school arts enrichment program. These children, many of them are from new immigrant families. Their parents don't speak English or speak English in a very limited way. So what happens is these kids become the interpreter for their parents. Mm -hmm. They go into the doctor's office and they're the ones telling their parents what the illness is their parents have. Well, for a seven or an eight year old, that's one hell of a lot to ask. <laughs> it's a kids. big responsibility, you're right. And so the kids don't get to be kids. What we're looking at is we want to establish where they can come to get help for homework, but where they get to be kids, where they get to play piano, where they get to draw, where they get yeah. to, to do things that are fun for the kids. Also, with the, the senior housing, for a lot of the kids, their extended family is overseas. And so here are, in many cases, older adults whose families live elsewhere need kids, they need grandparents. Yeah. So how do we bring them together? For the community, it begins to cross the bridges. Astoria is one of the most diverse communities in the world. Yeah. And so what we're looking at is it begins to cross the bridges. Astoria is one of the most diverse communities in the world. And so what we're looking at is how do we cross the bridges? How do we build these bridges generationally? Also between the, the various ethnic groups and the various faith groups. So we build our community up. The business is in the area of benefit because as the kids are able to get tutoring, able to have the resources they need, they're going to improve their ability and their economic income levels. The parents benefit, everyone benefits, in and fact, that's what we're working on. What, when churches bring communities together by building these bridges, they sort of develop a common market that businesses can tap into. Yes. That way businesses don't have to spend money developing niche products for different markets. They can achieve economies of scale that help improve efficiency and productivity. And I look at it, it also gives them a work Yes. If we're able to, because the kids, and we realize the kids are the key to get into these families. Mm -hmm. So the parents come. Their kids say, I want to go to this program. The parents come, and we're then able to bring them together for support groups, mm -hmm. for English classes, for skill training for businesses, computer training, so that they're not working on the low scale but beginning to get into a higher economic scale. Mm -hmm. 
And so the kids then benefit, the parents benefit, and the community benefits. Right. And for the businesses, this gives them a reason to invest in it. Mm -hmm. That they're looking and saying, okay, this provides us with a better workforce. Yes. And in fact, it's at this point that I think I should make clear why social entrepreneurship is such an important concept in today's world. Um, in my classes as a uh, political science teacher, um, I try to help the students understand that the three fundamental building blocks of any society are the family, that's obvious. Right. Um, historically, it was also the church. Right. And then beyond that, um, there is th there's these other sort of uh, merchant type organizations. You know, people are very comfortable s buying and selling products. You yes. go into any town, and there will always be a small town square. There'll be a mercado or or a, uh, a small market. Whether you go to Spain or uh, Morocco or Costa Rica, you'll find a bazaar, and those are three fundamental elements of any society. Well, and the bazaars used to be housed in the cathedrals. They were in the, the courtyards of the cathedrals in the towns. That's where the merchants would come because that's where the people were. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is, in one sense, what we're doing is going back to the cathedral model. Mm -hmm. It's not as large, but it's providing the needs of the community and becoming a community center once more. The church had withdrawn from the community. Many of the studies now show that one reason mainline churches are dying is they've become irrelevant to people. They walked in the door and it didn't talk about the people's needs. Yeah. It talked about getting to heaven, but it didn't talk about their needs here and now. Yeah. And it didn't help them with those needs minister would say, I'll pray for you, but not sit down and say, okay, let's look and find a solution. Let's help yeah. you. 